Now that we're done with the pipelines, let's keep laying some pipe and talk about OPEC+. Plus. OPEC Plus has agreed to its deepest cuts to oil production since the 2020 COVID pandemic at the Vienna meeting, which is ironic, they're meeting in Vienna, curbing supply in an already tight market despite pressure from the United States and others to pump more. The United States needs to be less dependent on OPEC Plus and foreign producers of oil, said the White House spokesman John Kirby. What an incredible opportunity. Yeah, we should be drilling more, dude. How about we just, uh, I don't know, nationalize our extraction industry? That's a good way. Why is it ironic that they're meeting in Vienna? I mean, I think it's ironic that they decide the fate of European markets in the fucking heart of Europe. Like, I get it. Like, they are they have headquarters. I don't know. You don't find it interesting? No, I get it. I know that their headquarters there. That, that, that fact in, in and of itself is funny to me. And it's ironic. It has to make you wonder how much power capital has over everything else it's so much more than like nationalistic desires it's so much more powerful than any and every other thing that like these nation states some of which literally still fucking murder people can all have their leaders get together you have these ideas when you live in america or when you live in a western liberal democracy about like how countries should run and then you have monarchs who fucking you know butcher people like almost individually and personally getting together in the fucking middle of Europe and being like, we're going to fucking lower the supply. Here's our headquarters. We're going to lower the fucking supply of oil so that like Europe gets cucked. That's how much power you have if you have that sweet, sweet uh, world come. Why do you keep talking about Europe as the only one that will be suffering consequences? The fuck? It's like the US won't suffer from it? No, of course the United States will suffer from it too. What the fuck are you talking about? That's why I said Western neoliberal hegemony which the United States is very much the, the main disseminator of. Of course, the United States will suffer political losses, but the EU countries will suffer further. Here, people keep asking, what is OPEC? Here you go. It's petrol for your car. It's an ingredient in a lot of what we use, from the plastic glove that keeps your hand clean to the tires that keep you on the road, which means these products can be affected by the fluctuating price of oil. That price is largely decided by supply and demand, and the collective actions of an organization that provides 40% of the world's oil, OPEC. OPEC stands for the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries. It was formed in 1960 by founding members Iraq, Kuwait, Iran, Saudi Arabia and Venezuela. The group was created to monitor the stability and prices of the petroleum I mean, if, if I were Biden, I'd tell MBS the cost of maintenance on their bombers just went up uh, to $1 billion a day. I mean, yeah, you could do that. that I mean, that's no different uh, fundamentally than like arming the Houthis. <laughs> so <laughs> it's literally like the other side of that equation. Why not? Fucking roll with it, dude. Go crazy. You know what I mean? Oops. Inflation came for you, Jack. Cut the malarkey. Oh, man. Except again... That contract is not dictated by Brandon. That contract is not done at the behest of the State Department. Or if it is done at the behest of the State Department, it is being done for Raytheon, for Lockheed Martin, for Boeing. Do you understand? Everything that America does, it does because it's five corporations in a fucking trench coat, okay? So you can't really do that either. That's the, 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 the fundamental reality that a lot of people are forgetting in this circumstance. Okay, the American government, just like all governments, is vast. It's it has awesome powers, and yet it regularly refuses to use said powers because they are cucked to corporations. Okay, that's the reality. Same goes for the fucking oil producers, which we cannot control and refuse to control. And same goes for the fucking defense manufacturers. Those are like two major industries right there. You can talk a big game about what America can do, what America should do, but ultimately, I don't think they're going to do that. Anyway, let's get back to OPEC, the real dystopian uh, future monopoly that we were talking about. The market, which was previously determined by US-dominated multinational oil companies. Currently, OPEC member countries also include Algeria, Angola, Ecuador, Equatorial Guinea, Gabon, Libya, Nigeria, Qatar, and the United Arab Emirates. Today, these oil-producing member countries supply over 40% of the world's crude oil production, and together they control more than 80% of the world's proven crude oil reserves. OPEC's oil and energy ministers meet twice a year in Vienna, Austria, where they collectively dis- Pan Am, and, Pan Am or Judy is a dumb question. Pan Am, dude, what the fuck? Are you kidding me? That's my queen. How dare you even- ...decide whether to raise or lower oil output in order to maintain a stable market. 
Critics argue that it's a way for them to maintain the price they want. But does OPEC actually control world oil? The biggest consumers of oil are the US and China. It was China's rapid development in the early 2000s, coupled with a lack of growth in the production of oil, which sent the price of oil shooting up. In turn, those high prices made it profitable for non-OPEC countries like the US and Canada to go after and discover harder to extract oil. Because they weren't bound by the cartel's decisions, these countries have grown their levels of supply which meant OPEC's market influence began to decline. A rise in supply and a reduced demand for oil in Europe and Asia led to the price of oil crashing. This caused political problems in some OPEC countries like Venezuela, where oil is the chief driver of the economy. It has the largest proven oil reserve I want to run this again. Hold on. Market influence began to decline. A rise in supply and a reduced demand for oil in Europe and Asia led to the price of oil crashing. This caused political problems in some OPEC countries like Venezuela, where oil... Oh, that caused the political uh, crisis. Because, like, if that was enough, then there wouldn't be additional sanctions, right? No political crisis in Saudi Arabia, though. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, weird. It has the largest proven oil reserves in the world, but also the highest inflation rate on the planet. But for most consumers, the drop in the price of oil has meant cheaper fuel and lower energy costs. Since 2016, however, oil prices have been steadily rising. Later that year, the Saudi-led OPEC members agreed to the first production cut since 2008, a reduction of around 1 million barrels a day. Crucially, Russia and 10 other non-members also agreed to pump less oil. OPEC and its allies agreed to extend the cuts through to the end of 2018. But in the US, there's a shale oil boom. Production levels recently hit a record high and are predicted to surpass both Saudi Arabia and Russia. But even with higher output levels, the US still imports roughly 300 million barrels of oil a month. For the renewable energy industry, however, keeping oil supply high and steady makes it an attractive alternative and might be one of the most powerful tools to grow the sector but the price of oil remains volatile. Geopolitical factors such as the Iran nuclear deal and President Trump threatening OPEC could see the prices go up or down. But in the end, the forces of supply and demand will ultimately determine the price. With more than 80% of the world's proven oil reserves, OPEC in the 21st century continues to be relevant and their decisions can still affect the price of oil, if just temporarily. But as new sources of energy gradually replace hydrocarbons, the oil industry faces a race against time. In the words of an ex-Saudi oil minister, the Stone Age did not end for lack of stone, and the oil age will end long before the world runs out of oil. Notice how there's no energy independence discussions ever that revolve around, uh, I don't know, shifting our hyper-focus away from fossil fuels. I uh, just... Anyway. That clip is from 2018, by the way. Vienna, London. OPEC Plus agreed to steep oil production cuts on Wednesday, curbing supply on an already tight market. I thought it was going to be 1 million barrels and then push to 2 million. I was wrong. New information has come out since then. And now the de facto leader, Saudi Arabia, said the cut of 2 million barrels per day of output equal to 2% of global supply was necessary to respond to rising interest rates in the West and a weaker global economy. The kingdom rebuffed criticism. It was colluding with Russia, which is included in the OPEC Plus group, to drive prices higher and said the West was often driven by wealth arrogance when criticizing the group. The White House said President Joe Biden would continue to assess whether to release further strategic oil stocks to lower prices. The president is disappointed by the short-sighted decision by OPEC Plus to cut production quotas while the global economy is dealing with the continued negative impact of Russian President Vladimir Putin's invasion of Ukraine, the White House said. I love that Saudi Arabia whipped America so fucking hard. They gave you a little bit of juice and they were like, yeah, 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 we'll improve production. Okay. And then the market stabilized a little bit. Everyone's going, oh man, dark brand. And he did it again, myself included. And then now they're like, just kidding. Lol. Burp. Turn the faucet back off. All of a sudden they're like, yeah, know who your fucking masters are. Biden faces low approval ratings ahead of midterms elections due to the soaring inflation and has called on Saudi Arabia a long-term U.S. ally to help lower prices. U.S. officials have said the part of the reason Washington wants to lower oil prices is to deprive Moscow of its oil revenue. Biden traveled to Riyadh 
this year but failed to secure any firm cooperation commitments on energy relations have been further strained as saudi arabia has not condemned moscow's actions in ukraine dude <laughs> the funniest thing here would be if they like uh i don't know release some 9-11 documents or something that directly showed uh, the saudi involvement i don't think they'll do that though i think they'll cave and concede and instead of going balls to the wall mode against saudi arabia they'll be like please we'll we'll literally personally start killing uh, children in Yemen, please. Justin, Russia could cut its oil production by as much as 3 million barrels per day if the EU and US proceed with a plan to cap prices. Market experts have warned Bloomberg. What happened? I thought everybody loved the free market. I, I actually don't understand it. Like, now they don't like the free market? Is that what it is? Seems like the United States and the EU uh, are not in favor of a free market, which of course, a free market, not so free when there's already a fucking monopoly on the other side of it, regardless. It's great. Once again, on the one hand, you have the oil cartel, okay, OPEC Plus, that completely control and dominate the supply of fucking uh, oil barrels. On the other side, you have Western nations that are like, nah, we're just not going to pay uh, whatever you want us to pay. We're going to cap it. And of course, as always, the people that suffer are just regular Normans, regular civilians, regular citizens that have absolutely zero fucking say in the matter. Do it, Dark Brandon. Reveal OPEC's immunity. Key paragraph here in the White House statement suggests that maybe U.S. interest in exploring NOPEC or repealing uh, sovereign immunity from antitrust legislation that protects OPEC producers who manipulate energy prices would be a huge response. In light of today's action, the Biden administration will also consult with Congress on additional tools and authorities to reduce OPEC's control over energy prices. Dark Brandon rises up. I just don't know how they would do this. Like, I don't know what they would do. Like, how can you say, well, it's illegal, sir, to have a monopoly here? Like, what are you going to do? Fucking invade them? Are you going to invade every fucking country that is a part of OPEC? Like, I, I legitimately do not know what you would do in this situation. Is that a price cap on domestically produced oil and limit exports? Yes, but you can only go, you can only combat that so much. There is already a reason why America has, for a very long time, kind of bowed down to OPEC, right? Dem Defense Production Act on domestic producers. First of all, Here's what I will say. This is anti-capitalist action, okay? This, in and of itself, is anti-capitalist action. It might be motivated by political reasons, but this is inherently an anti-capitalist action. And the only defense mechanism is doing further anti-capitalist action, like nationalizing oil production, or at least some semblance of that, which is using the Defense Production Act, right? And I'm going to tell you what will not happen, <laughs> That America is a capitalist nation. For them to do something like this, something so fucking severe, like wh what are they going to do? Oil producers would do what they're doing in Nigeria to America, okay? Joe Brandon would turn into JFK. And I don't mean early JFK. I don't mean Marilyn Monroe having sex uh, JFK. I mean JFK in Dallas. These guys do not have a problem starving the American public. They have said time and time again, that their main interest is their shareholder interest, okay? Improving profits for their shareholders. At a time when Joe Brandon was like, come on, come on, make it cheaper, make it cheaper, make it cheaper, make it cheaper. They were like, no, fuck that. We're not doing that. It's easier to imagine the end of the world than, to, than the end of capitalism. And uh, you can just copy paste that into all facets, right? Be the first major OPEC plus cut since 2020 when oil prices went negative. And this is obviously something that the Biden administration would be, you know, very concerned about. The question is, how large is the cut going to be? We're hearing numbers like 2 million barrels a day production cut. Who will make the cut? A number of OPEC countries are underperforming. So the question is, are the countries that are the major producers going to do the bulk of the heavy lifting on this production cut? Alima, the big question in this is, look, o OPEC exists for a reason. It's to try and manipulate prices of oil, keep prices higher. Um, what, what do they think is a, a fair price at this point? We used to think 40 to $60 was okay or 60 to $70. If they're not happy at 87, what, what's their expectation of where oil prices should be? I mean, OPEC producers always say they are not targeting price. 
There, I think there are multiple reasons why uh -huh. a production cut is likely coming. I mean, we had Prince Abdelaziz, the Saudi oil minister, several weeks ago express real concern about what he believed was a disconnect between the financial and physical markets. So is this a sort of circuit breaker that the Saudis are throwing into the market saying, you're more concerned about Jay Powell, we're going to show you that we are a regulator in this market. Russia, though, is a clear factor to watch. And the deputy prime minister of Russia will be arriving at OPEC soon. He is under U.S. sanction. And the Russians have every incentive to want to push prices higher. They also have every incentive to try to scuttle the European Union's plans to impose sanctions and a price cap on Russian oil come December 5. And that's why this potential meeting is so much more important that there's so much more riding on that. This is not just about prices. This is not just about the market. This is about right. global stability from a defensive perspective, from a security right. perspective. I, do they not understand that or do they not Be care? I mean, Becky, this is far more than about oil. Now, Russia is at the head of the OPEC plus table. There are no indications that Russia will be vacating that seat. But to have the Russian deputy prime minister in Vienna at this moment, obviously, this is not just an oil story. This is a geopolitical story. This is a security story. And we're going to be watching very closely. To I love that we just finished the fucking what is OPEC story. OK, for those of you who still don't understand what OPEC is or what OPEC plus is. And this motherfucker goes, what is OPEC? Bro, just go back. Go back in the fucking... Please, just go back in the VOD or something, dude. I, I don't know. Just Google it. People sometimes just expect me to spoon-feed information over and over again. It's like, I'm not Google, man. We already covered they it. They have been making calls, trying to get around. Y'all are failing, okay? You're failing. I mean, obviously, this is not something that the White House wants. They do not want an OPEC plus production cut. Remember, President Biden visited Saudi Arabia in July. And so I think they were trying to potentially scale. One cool thing that you do have to recognize about OPEC and OPEC plus nations is that some of these countries within OPEC and OPEC plus, and I would even include Russia in this, but of course, Saudi Aramco being one, are beholden to state actors, unlike the United States of America, which is beholden to corporate benefactors. So the exact opposite dynamic exists in the United States of America. The United States government is beholden to corporate profit motives, whereas the Saudi oil producers are beholden to the Saudi government, the kingdom. So whatever they say goes. Same with even Russia, where if the state decides we are going to change our, our oil production and our output, then the companies have to follow along. In the United States of America, if the United States of uh, the, the American government decides, yeah, we got to do something about these oil prices, our corporations will say, fuck off, Jack. So dictators are better. Unironically, yes. I am actually saying that if you consider state-owned and operated extraction industries to be dictatorships, then yes, the Norwegian dictatorship trumps the American corporate oligopoly. Yeah, the, the dictatorship of Norway is fundamentally a better way to operate than the American oligarchy. Notice how I didn't say the Saudi dictatorship and I said the Norwegian dictatorship because Norway also is a country that has, uh, Norway is a, is a Western nation. It also has oil, and it has also uh, nationalized its extraction industries all the way from oil down to forestry because you only have the opportunity to comprehend fucking dictatorship, bad, wrong. Any sort of control over corporations is bad, dictatorship, wrong, but you don't feel like that when it's Norway. That's why I use Norway instead of Venezuela or, you know, Saudi Arabia. This is how outrageously cuck Biden is. Last year, big oil companies, not the gouge Americans. That wasn't last year. That was this year. Wait, was that last year? I thought that was this year. What the fuck? Time flies, dude. That's crazy that this was last year. Oh, my God. I thought that was like last week, man. What the fuck? Dude, what is happening to my brain, brother? Back the size of this cut. But again, all indications are that we are hearing right now, this is going to be a multi-million barrel a day cut. Potentially two million barrels a day is going to be announced this afternoon. What will that mean for oil prices for the oil markets? I mean, Becky, this is really an interesting question because you have a number of OPEC countries that have been underperforming. So the question is, is this effectively going to be a sort of paper cut or is this going to be a significant pullback in actual production? So who does the production cuts will matter in terms of what the market impact will be? And even if we have a sort of muted response today because there's already this expectation of production cut, fast forward to December. 
That's when that European embargo on Russian oil takes effect. The price cap policy is supposed to launch. And so I think what we're setting up for is a potential significant bounce come December. So even if we don't see it today, keep your eyes on year end. U.S. plans to ease Venezuela's sanctions on enabling Chevron to pump oil. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. Where's that fucking... Listen. Listen. Let me just tell you, okay? What you gotta do is turn your motherfucking enemies to your biggest motherfucking clients, baby. That's right. Sigma grind set. What's going on? What's happening? Oh, y'all need oil? Guess what? We got it. A, B, C. Always be closing. What happened? You came back. They always do. Make your biggest haters your biggest customers. Hashtag Sigma Mindset. Hashtag Masculinity. Hashtag Daily Grind. Hashtag Sigma Grind Set. Right. That was what I was looking for. Get him hooked. Get him hooked. Get him fucking hooked on that sweet earth cum. That sweet, delicious juice of the earth. Just like I get you hooked on the top of the hour ad break. That's right. Because at the top of the hour, all my fucking haters become my biggest customers. Where they purchase a $5 a month sub or a free one with a Twitch Prime. That's right, Twitch Prime is fucking free. And you can use that free Twitch Prime right here, right now. In an effort to no longer see the ads and have an ad-free broadcasting experience. All you need to do, baby. Or maybe if you're lucky, you can just get a gifted sub. But not many are. So you should probably make your own look. Here's the woman ad break now. Yeah, I posted that fucking Maduro meme. That's right. I did it. I fucking did it. Wait, what did the top of the hour bot get? That motherfucker looks like your dad. He could be. Maduro does look very Turkish. 